The next option you have, say you don't want the invoice to be attached to the job for whatever reason. Like us, for example, we have customers on, you know, different types of bundles and things of that nature. And say you just don't want the invoice attached to the job for whatever reason. Instead of creating a job and going through everything we just did, instead you'll just hop over to the invoices tab. You'll select create a new invoice. So I've had a lot of questions from you guys lately about Gorilla Desk and specifically how do you go about setting up a monthly recurring invoice? Now you could be doing this for many different reasons. Most of you guys are similar to me from the aspect of you either A, want to have your customer pay in maybe monthly for a quarterly service, maybe yearly for a quarterly service. You may even want to invoice just completely separate from the job. Those are the two to three main instances that you'll utilize these different techniques within Gorilla Death. So I just wanted to make a quick video here with my dummy account of myself. And what you'll do is, of course, you go into the customer account. Let's say you want to create a new job, of course. So we would go in here and just create a quarterly service, for example, if I can find out which one. What we do too is we label them, you know, paid at the time of service, paid monthly, paid yearly, because we have it already set up for either a monthly invoice, yearly invoice, pay at the time of the service, whatever the case may be. So we're going to start out here with the one that we created for our monthly service. And then, of course, everything looks like usual. We're treating every three months, day of the month, day of the week, whatever you prefer. And then we're going to go over here to the invoice tab. Now, this is where, you know, yours is probably going to look different than mine. So what I, what I will actually do is I'll go ahead and remove this invoice and we'll pretend that we're just, you know, creating a whole new job within your Gorilla Desk account. So you see here we have no invoice now. So then we go over here to add an invoice so right now it defaults to invoice repeats with the job. So if you don't adjust this at all, of course, it's going to repeat with each quarterly job, by monthly job, whatever the case may be. And to edit this, it's actually pretty simple. Usually what I will do first before I even mess with anything, say I know this is going to be the monthly invoice. What I'll do is, is say we treated September 25th, which is the time of this video. So usually what we do is we either charge on the 1st or 15th. That's just what we do. You can do whatever day you want. So let's say you want to start charging them October 1st. You'll go to the date issue. You'll select that date of the first bill that you want it to pull from. Then you'll go over to invoice frequency. There's like a little gear icon. I don't know if you all caught that, but you'll click on that little gear icon. And as you can see, you can pick from a few different options. You can do repeat with job, weekly, monthly, yearly, does not repeat at all like a one-time service, whatever the case may be. For this one, we're going to do monthly. So of course we want it to repeat every month. That's the other cool thing. You can do every two months, every three, every six, whatever you know you decide at the end of the day. But what we're gonna do is like we said, we're setting up a monthly reoccurring billing. So we're doing it for every month. We wanna do day of the month. And that's why we go ahead and do the invoice date before we do this, because this is where a lot of people get confused. See how it's not letting me change that? Because the only way you can actually change that is by going to the date that it's issued, if that makes sense. So it took me a while to kind of figure that out when I first did this a couple years ago. So just wanted to throw that in there because it is a good little helpful tip for sure. Quick interruption. I just wanted to remind you guys, I've been trying to beat this drum a lot lately. We have about 3,000 of you that are currently subscribed. Of that 3,000, only about 200 of you are receiving active notifications from our channel. And I get asked all the time by you guys, why do I keep missing the live? Live streams why do I miss this why do I miss that you have to make sure not only that you hit that little bell notification down there also go to the settings in your phone and make sure your YouTube notifications specifically are not turned off if they're turned off doesn't matter if you hit that bell over and over again you will not be notified and you definitely want to make sure to be subscribed hit the bell icon make sure those notifications are turned on because we got a bunch of things in the works we plan on having live sit down podcasts with other pest control business owners so you definitely don't want to miss out on those podcasts with a bunch of other business owners and figure out how all of us can achieve our business dreams at the end of the day. So if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell icon, and make sure, of course, that your notifications are turned on. And I'll see you on the other side. So like we said, we want it as day of the month. That's something you definitely want to pay attention to because it defaults to day of the week. So we want it as day of the month. We never want that to end. Say this is a mosquito account. You could do after on a date or, you know, another thing that we'll do a lot of times is, is if someone has a rodent exclusion service or a termite service, something that they are going to bundle with, say, a general pest control and we're doing like our own little in-house financing, then sometimes what we'll do is to say it's six months. We'll say, OK, this invoice is going to end after six months. 
if it's a 12 month agreement, 12 months, whatever the case may be, that way you don't have to remember to go in and actually, you know, clear out the invoice yourself. Had that happen before and had to credit someone because we charged one month too many. So it makes it very easy to just, you know, either end on a certain date or end after X amount of invoices. But like we said, this is for a quarterly service. So we're going to put it as never. Of course, we wanted to charge on the first. And then from here, you'll either have some sort of card on file. That's what we do. So it would say charge to whatever cards on file um, and send a receipt. That's the option that we would pick. You can even pick a certain time that you want them to charge. It defaults to 9 a.m. So we just, you know, leave it alone. It doesn't really affect me at the end of the day. I might put it, I might change mine at some point to like 6 a.m. That way, if they don't go through, then I'm notified before we start the day versus in the middle of the day when we're already out in the field. So then once you like everything that you see here, you'll just hit save frequency. And then of course, from there, you know, you just pick whatever line item that you want to pick from. We're going to say quarterly service. General maintenance every three months, you can put in there, you know, paid monthly if you wish. And then, you know, you can put in whatever price you want, 39 plus tax, you know, whatever the case may be. And then boom, you just hit save and then it'll, you know, send the receipt to them every month as soon as the card is charged. If for some reason the card doesn't go through, it also pops up in our notification inbox there. Don't want to expose a bunch of customer information or anything, but uh, it'll pop up in your notifications as well, which makes it a hundred times easier to like follow up with people like, Hey, we noticed your card didn't go through. Do you, we have like a little default message. We'll say, Hey, we just wanted to reach out because we noticed your monthly invoice did not go through this month. Do you want us to try to run that card again? Or do we need to update the card? And then sometimes as well, you know, you can go ahead and even add an ACH. Now we have one customer so far we've done ACH with, I don't like it as much personally because the payout takes a little bit longer. It's like three to five business days or with Stripe, it's like two business days. So I prefer just to stick with cards personally. But if you have customers that their cards are declining over and over, it might be something you want to bring up to them. Like, hey, if it's easier for you, we can also offer ACH now. It's very easy to do. All you do is you just hit send by email and then it'll send them an invite. They verify within like one or two business days usually because it'll deposit like one penny or something. And then you, you know, you go ahead and verify that and then everything's good to go. The next option you have, say you don't want the invoice to be attached to the job for whatever reason, like us, for example, we have customers on, you know, different types of bundles and things of that nature. And say you just don't want the invoice attached to the job for whatever reason, instead of creating a job and going through everything we just did, instead, you'll just hop over to the invoices tab. You'll select create a new invoice. You'll go again, you know, pick whatever date that you want it to start on, you know, say October 1st again. We'll go ahead and make sure we have the right, you know, billing address, all that. Do not repeat. We want that to be monthly. And then, you know, you just walk through the same steps that you did before. Day of the month, never, um, you know, charge to and send receipt, whatever time you want. Boom, save frequency. And then you have a recurring invoice that is not attached to the job whatsoever. So let me just show you guys kind of what this would look like. And the same thing, like we said, for yearly, say you have a customer who, um, you know, has a termite renewal that you do every year and you just want that not attached to any job for whatever reason, same thing. You just do yearly day of the year, whatever day of the year, you know, you want the renewal on, you know, pretty, pretty simple stuff overall. Once you actually get in here and do it, I would definitely suggest you guys, if it's your first time doing this, which I'm sure for a lot of you, it is, if you're watching this video, I'd probably pull this video up kind of side by side, you know, have like a separate window open or maybe have the video on your phone while you're setting up your first one, because your first one, it will take some time. It's going to, you know, take you a few minutes. You know, once you do one or two of them, it'll just become secondhand nature how to do this stuff. But trust me, you'll definitely want some kind of guidance there when you're doing your first one for sure. Speaking from experience on that. But like I said, I'll show you guys just real quick kind of how that looks. So let's just say, see, I even forgot to do my invoice properly myself. October 1st, we go in here, we do monthly, we do day of the month, and then we'll do charge to and send receipt. And then we'll keep that at 9 a.m. Save. And then we'll do, we'll just say um, exclude, or no, we'll say exclusion renewal, for example. Um, and we're going to leave it as monthly. Of course, this isn't on a monthly invoice that we'd normally do, but this is just for the example. We'll add it. Then you see there, this is where it will throw some people off. You think, well, I selected October 1st. Why is this saying 1101? Because the first recurring invoice will be on 1101. The first invoice will go out 1001. That's why you see here, it says created 1001. That's when your first invoice is going to go out. 
the upcoming invoice, you know, for the future is letting you know that, okay, you do have this set up right because it's going to, you know, go ahead and pull on the 11th, or I mean, on the 1st of the 11th month, which is November, of course. So uh, sometimes I can throw people off. I unintentionally double charged a bunch of people by thinking, you know, oh no, this is wrong. I need to go in here and edit this and, you know, make sure that charge on the 1st. We ended up double charging like a lot of customers because I didn't realize that that's what was going on here. It was throwing me off. So again, I wanted to show you guys that just so you don't freak out and panic when you see that it says upcoming invoice 1101. Keep in mind, like we said, it's letting you know this is the current invoice because this is when you created it, obviously. So, and then say you want to delete it because the customer cancels or whatever the case may be, you just delete it and then good to go. And then you just do the same thing with the job. If there's a job there, you delete the job. Sometimes the recurring invoice will stick. So see how we, um, you know, manage to get rid of the recurring invoice, but the 1001 invoice is still there. What you do in that event is just click on it and then just hit delete and then, you know, you're good to go. So in my opinion, this is by far way better of a setup than setting up Stripe subscriptions. Stripe subscriptions actually cost more money in terms of processing fees. I could get into that in a whole nother video for you guys if you guys want me to, but this is the quickest way, easiest way, cheapest way in terms of saving on processing fees and everything that you can do when it comes to recurring invoices. If you guys have any other questions about this subject, don't hesitate to drop it down in the comments down below. And if you're wondering who the heck is this guy and you're still watching at this point, my name is Griffin Thomas. Of course, I own my own pest control company, Preferred Pest Management, in the Dallas, Texas area. We've been in business four years now, and I just document my entire business journey for you guys. I'm not a, you know, employee of Gorilla Desk or anything. We do have an affiliate code. It gives you, um, I forget the exact discount. I believe you get some kind of free trial, like a two week free trial on their pro version. So if you haven't used Gorilla Desk before and you haven't signed up, um, you can join for free. Like we said, no strings attached first two weeks. There should be a link in the description box in my link tree down below if you wanna try them out. Uh, other than that, like I said, I'm not like an employee of them. Um, so far I have not even made a single dollar off of them with affiliates or anything like that. So like I said, I just try to help you guys out in any way that I can. If you have any other questions about Gorilla Desk or about anything else, you know, service business related, feel free to drop it in the comments down below. And if you're not already subscribed, of course, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell icon. I'll try to remember to also link a video somewhere down in the bottom that would benefit you guys, or maybe even a playlist, because we have playlists of videos. I try to keep everything somewhat organized for you guys. That way you can just go boom, 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 right down the list of the videos, and that will help you. And I appreciate you guys for watching. Like I said, hopefully it did benefit you in some way. If it did, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in our next video or live stream.